Praise the Lord. Hey, let's take from 706 to let's say 709 max. Everybody leave their seat and go meet a stranger, compliment an outfit, ask for a beautician recommendation. Check on some cuticles or <laughs> everybody go meet someone. We do this because these are your prayer partners and you need to know who they are. Check on the kids and see how work is going. Check on bosses and loved ones. All right, remember the Rosa Park rules. Try to get as close as possible. We don't have to sit at the back of the bus. Those battles have been won. <laughs> Ish, praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, y'all. Congratulations to coming to Friday night uh, prayer. It is an awesome, awesome thing. And this is the bunch that be on time. Y'all the one with the endurance and the stamina. In about 20 minutes, the stragglers going to come in, and, but they're going to catch the river that y'all create, all right? So it's so good to see you. Um, how many of you have been here every day for prayer? Have you kind of sensed like a journey, something that the Spirit of God is expressing? There's a, a, a continuum there. Uh, we've been praying themes. It's been amazing. Y'all have done a phenomenal job with tracing these lanes well, tracking well. So I know many of you probably got tried. How many of you uh, experienced the devil trying to get on your nerves today? Let me see. <laughs> Tell the truth. Did you want to smack someone today, just one person? Amen. Great sign. Great sign. <laughs> It means that the heavens are open over you. Say, so be it. All right, go ahead and get your journals out real quick. And um, I hope that you've been receiving instructions from the Lord concerning your personal life, obviously, and also concerning um, what God is doing in this season in all nations worship assembly. As an intercessor, you are moving in contract with whatever God's counsel is concerning the season. So I don't want to make the mistake, I think we've done this before in several years, where 
the Spirit of God would utter something or we pray things and we don't steward it well. God is not speaking just for the sake of our hearing. He's speaking so that we can partner with him in faith for what he wants to produce. Say amen. So becoming an intercessor obliges you to whatever God is saying. It's not just praying and we're not treating prayers like poetry, like we're just expressing ourselves in that fashion. We're actually making a commitment to what God wants to do. If I pray this, I'm posturing myself for it. As I believe you for it, I'm moving in the direction of this thing, all right? So everything we pray, uh, if it comes out of the Spirit of God, it's a plan of God expressed, but you become a partner with it. Now, this is something that is a real deep conversation because a lot of people don't know how to partner with God. This is not to blame God. And, I, and it's very easy to get a prophetic word or a prophetic promise or an inclination. And we leave the manifestation of it strictly to God. But there is partnership that's necessary for the manifestation of things that God wants to do. You can't live in an opposite or an obstinate position to something God wants to do and get mad when it does not materialize. So you allow the prophetic word to position you. I need to position myself for this manifestation, position myself for this to come to pass. I have a very unique topic tonight, but again, I'm bringing you into partnership with it by prayer. We're partnering with it by prayer. Now, when I say that, I want to just make it as pragmatic as possible. How many of you know there's a lot of prayer teaching that's not practical? And I'll be the first to tell you I'm not the most pragmatic person. I'm trying my best not to go into theorizing and philosophizing, etc. But I'm going to try my best to give you some pragmatics. When I say partner with God by prayer, as you pray something and the burden of that thing comes out of you, you do the internal work in your heart to believe what you've prayed. That's step number one. And I'm going to repeat that because it's important. There may be things in your heart that has doubts, concerns, apprehensions, and fear. And then you pray something and your heart still may flutter at the thought of this thing coming to pass or coming to be. So step one of partnering with God in prayer is I've got to bring my heart in subjection to this. The very first thing that attacks your faith is your feelings. After your feelings attack your faith, the very next thing or the very next onslaught is coming from your logic. Your feelings and your logic will meet something as you pray. Does this make sense to you? So when I say partner with God, what I'm doing is I'm praying up until my heart believes that this can happen. And here's why. It's a very essential prayer component. Don't pray what you don't believe. Believing in it is a massive part of prayer. So it's bringing my heart to the place where I can actually fathom you doing this, you revealing this and you showing this. Now, the, the other part of parting with God in prayer after you do the internal work for the heart, and again, this is me being as practical as possible, you now have to align your language. I will repeat. You must align your language. When you take on a prayer issue or a prayer matter, you must adapt the language necessary to make that thing materialize. In other words, if I'm going to pray it, I cannot speak opposite about it. I speak in the direction of my faith. This is why in a lot of houses around the world, when people position themselves as intercessors, but they use that very same mouth, that very same tongue to criticize, critique, speak against what they're praying for, their prayers are not effective. Something can be true, an observation, an assessment. This person may be this, that organization may be that, this nation may be whatever. But here's one of the reasons why even America is in the place that she's in. You can't call yourself a prayer movement for America and criticize America. Does that mean that things aren't wrong with America? Nah. She's got a lot of st stuff wrong with her. But the problem is, is I'm an intercessor. And so because of that, I have now relinquished my right, open up, I've relinquished my right to use my tongue in the opposite agenda of my prayers. You have the power to cancel out what you pray. You've got the power to nullify it. 
you've got the power to reverse it. So once I make the commitment to pray on a matter and an issue, I'm not walking around naive or blind or with an inability to see. I am choosing what side of God's will I'm going to talk on. This is as practical as I can be. Which means that even if I think it, I won't let it part my mouth. Even if I observe it and it's negative, I won't let it part my mouth. They're guilty. Won't come out of my mouth. Inconsistent. Won't come out of my mouth. Why? This is a guard and a gate. Lift your hands and say, my mouth is a guard and a gate. So you have to do that. Align my heart. And then align my language. I speak the will of God. We always say when it comes to the material. But we in prayer need to speak those things that be not as though they were. It's very important. You cannot be a carnal intercessor. A cynical intercessor. I'm afraid of intercessors that find more joy in saying they're realist than saying that they're humble. you got to be very careful about opinionated intercessors. Open up. It's difficult to pray the agenda of God if you have a bias or an idea of something before you go to the Lord, okay? So that's one of the most effective things I can teach you about prayer. Partner with prayer. Partner with the Spirit of God in prayer. Now, you're going to notice in the next few minutes, this is something that I've done uh, for the last couple of days that we've been in prayer. What we'll do is we'll start to pray, and scriptures will come out of you. Declarations will come out of you. Burdens will come out of you. And when I say a burden, here's what this means. Don't y'all like my trying to be practical? Okay, so when I say I have a burden, it means that I don't have peace without praying this more. So, for example, everybody when they're in religion especially, let's say you fall, you make a mistake, you have a sin, you have a weakness, and I believe Evangelist uh, Lachelle, we need to do a better job at teaching the difference between sins and weaknesses. A lot of you are repenting for weaknesses, but I don't have the time to go there. Anyway, so when we're doing with that in sin, when you go and repent, you say, oh, oh man, I went back to my old lover or my old this or my old habit. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. So that's an inverted and a perverse form of repetition where you're laboring for something that you don't have to labor for. So the opposite of that is if I'm in prayer, that something may grip me and I don't feel like I'm supposed to stop praying it. Now rehearsing it and repeating it don't make God hear you any further but there is a such thing as activity that's adverse to your prayers so you pray it and, and what, what does that repetition do it's not vain repetition what Jesus said but sometimes it's the, the, the meditations of the heart now here's what will happen if I tell you for example pray for a chair what you do is you say, Father, thank you for this chair. I believe you for this chair. You are the God of this chair. You manufacture this chair. Lord, there are people in the world that need a chair. Will you give us the right chair, the right amount of chairs? Let the chair not break. What am I doing? There are different angles to pray about the same exact thing. Now, it's not anxiety. Is this making sense to you? The more you pray into it, the more insight you get. This is why that type of repetition is necessary because you're going to come into more insight and more understanding as you pray. And that's important if you're going to hit a target in prayer. Tonight we're going to pray something that's very interesting. In the book of John, and I'm going to need a lot of your help with this. We're going to have to tear this thing up and roll around and get your prayer shawls and all that stuff. By the way, if you're walking around with a tallit and you've got unforgiveness in your heart, you may as well use it for a napkin. That thing is no different from a tablecloth if you've got unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. Just go ahead and have a picnic with it. Make it matter. Make it mean something. Does this make sense to you? That prayer thing, that prayer to lead is a reminder for yourself to be hidden. It doesn't give you more volume. So if you're not going to do the internal work of an intercessor, just take it off. Amen. Jesus told the 12 drill, I won't leave you as orphans. I won't leave you as orphans. He didn't say he wouldn't leave them. He said, I won't leave you as orphans. Because Jesus knew that his seeming departure would impact the 12's understanding about who they are. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to come to you. Let's put that right here. I wonder what you understand about the concept of the family of God. In the New Testament, one of our apostolic precepts is a concept of family. Paul calls us the household of faith. Say yes. 
Let's give it up for Prophet Ruth. This is one of our prophets from New York City. I love her. Come on. Put those hands together. Come up here with me. You're going to prophesy. Lord, you didn't brought me the Hey, you didn't brought the whole group. I love y'all. Come sit up here. Okay. Um, sorry, got distracted. Uh, the household of faith. Here is what you have to understand about salvation, connection, destiny, purpose. You come into a household. Come on, Mohin. You come into a household. You come into a household. Not a local church, but a household. Not a different religion, but a household. Not a different system of belief, but a household. It's the household of faith. And if we're coming into the household of faith, there are certain agendas that want to break, penetrate, permeate how we see household concepts. And so God wants to restore that not just in this church, I feel the anointing coming on me already, not just in this church but in the earth, the concept of the household of faith. Now when you deal with the household of faith, the, art, the, the, the frustrating truth, come on, open your heart, the most complicated truth, the most perplexing reality is there is no family without a father. I didn't say that the Father always do what you want him to do or always be where you want him to be, but you came to be through the loins of a father, which means that the Father is the agent of the future or should be the advocate of the future. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. That's a father concept. So, so, so that, 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 that's there. You have a father that is a founder, that is the, the key, the flow, uh, the path to the future. But then you got, you got the mother role, the mother anointing in the household of faith that is the cultivator, the waterer, the one that makes the seed grow, the hider, the concealer. That's why that wisdom role belongs there. And then you've got sisters and brothers. We're going to pray through all of this. I hope you're not comfortable. How many of you know in the church we are struggling? Struggling to be sisters and brothers because we're rejecting our identity as sons and daughters. When you have strife in a church, it's probably because people don't have a clear understanding of what it means to lo no longer be foreigners, aliens, and strangers, but to find our place in the household of God without an orphan heart, without a bastardized mentality. Well, how do I know if that's in me? Phrases like this. Y'all, them, that self-isolating conversation that convinces you that you don't belong in the household of faith. So these are concepts and relationships and dynamics that are important to you because God decided that certain things can only happen in the house. And I don't know why y'all want to be like Israel and live in deserts and caves and holes in the grounds. You've got to decide for yourself that my destiny flows from the house. Now, when I say the house, I'm not just talking about what local church you attend. I'm talking about the internal mentality of your willingness to belong, surrender, connect, and yield everything you are. When you're in the right house, you shouldn't be holding back. Now, my gift is apostolic, so if you resist me, I'll get more aggressive. Nobody holds back when they're in the right house. When you hold back, and I'm not talking about fear, apprehension, insecurity. I'm talking about those of you that have made a conscious decision to not give everything you got. And then the devil counsels y'all and tells you that that's right, that's okay, that's good. It's happened. It's an agenda that's coming together in the earth. It's wicked, and if you can't see it, it's just because you're blind. The enemy is trying to disrupt the concept of connectedness. Stuff like what Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And everything that's not connected to me because I am the true vine, it gets burned. Maybe your hardship is heavenly because you've not done what the book of Ecclesiastes does, which says, watch thy foot when you go into the house of the Lord. Keep your foot there. You belong in the house of God, in your mind, in your heart. And here is the place that should bring many of us to repentance. There were a lot of psalmists that grieved when they were not in the house. 
It was a burdensome thing. They would write about missing the house of the Lord and missing the presence of the Lord. And you'll find in many places in the book of Psalms that those two phrases are used interchangeably. The house of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. Now, let me debunk this and just bring this into your concept. You may say, you know, oh, the presence of the Lord is everywhere because God is omniscient. He's omnipresent. And omnipresent means to be everything or everywhere at once, right? All right. So, um, um, who were there back there? Who was it, Eddie? Eddie, wave at me, son. Okay. Keep your hand up. Just keep waving. All right. Rachel, are you in the same uh, room as Eddie? How you know? All right. What does his hat say? Stand up so you can see. What is this? Ha- what are you doing? Watch her. What are you doing? How? Keep going. That's called seeking. He's in the same room. His hat didn't change what it said. She couldn't see it. So it took for her to deliberately rise from her place and walk towards him. That's the difference from being around God and being close to him. You've got to understand that that's what your seeking does. He doesn't change his position, but I brought my legs up, my mind up, my eyes up, my ears up, and I got into the presence of the Lord. So understanding the presence of the Lord is about understanding his proximity, not just his existence. And you cannot live your life just being confident that God exists. The atheists do that. The scientists do that. You've got to know he's present. My Bible tells me he is a very present help in the time of trouble. But what y'all going to do about rejecting identity as sons and daughters? How you going to cope with that? I've hit a brick wall and I realize in 2023 you're only going as far as your sonship. I hate that that came out my mouth, but I had to say it. You're only going as far in power, come on, open your heart, in authority, in demonstration, in favor, as you heal in your identity as a son of God, as a son of God. And God will send ministries and wisdom. He'll send counsel and different things to help you deepen that identity. But I want to talk to those of you that are rejecting it on purpose for fear of abandonment and rejection and that orphan style life that that begging that striving that convincing that persuasion lift your hands real quick and scream this and obey me i know this is uncomfortable but say i'm already worth it say it again say i'm already worth it listen to me if you never do anything else the love of the god is the love of god is unwavering toward you If you make a mistake in the morning, it didn't reverse your prayers today. You have a son position, a son status. That's the secret to power and authority. I'm a son of God. I've I've not been uh, taken on. And you know, I feel bad because we come from churches that make us walk and pray and worship like charity projects. Like we ought to be lucky that the Lord loves us. God doesn't see us that way. He sees us as members of the household of faith. We are his house. That's what he wanted out of Adam. That's what he got out of Jesus. Jesus redeemed Adam's failure as a son. Before he could make a mistake as a man, he had to make a mistake as a son. That means you could even walk with somebody, walk with God, misinterpret and misunderstand his intent toward you, and then that's where disobedience comes from. Disobedience comes from an accurate view of God. disobedience and rebellion is about what you see or not in God when you get clear view of God obedience becomes easy and I'd argue even natural I love to obey when I'm when I'm enamored by him the problem with the church is we don't know how to captivate no more and so there is a generation longing to be captivated by the resurrected one, but they don't have clear view of him. They're running into policy, procedure, politics, uh, 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 all everything but him, clear view of him. But clear view of him produces obedience in me. So maybe your prayer shouldn't be, Lord, make me obey you, make me obey you, make me obey you. Maybe it should be, Lord, let me see you. Because when I've seen him for real, obedience is the aftermath. It's called, watch this, the fruit of the Spirit for a reason. It's not the fruit of your adjustments. 
It's a byproduct of what the Holy Ghost grows in you by seed. So when you position yourself, long-suffering, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, all of that is a byproduct of how your relationship with the Holy Spirit grew. So I'm challenging you tonight. We're going to pray about fathers. Here is what the Lord gave me. We're going to pray about the spirit of frustration in fathers. The agenda, listen, the agenda against the father position and the father role right now in the earth, and this is Cairo's time, is frustration. We're going to pray about the mother role. The agenda of hell against the mother world right now is worry, worry, worry. We're going to deal with fathers and frustrations because they are future managers, future handlers, future uh, 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 articulants. They, they orate, they narrate the future. Mothers, we're going to deal with worry because they're ministers of supply and resource, okay? And then we're going to deal with this sister-brother thing. We have to deal with this sister-brother thing. We should be able to healthily relate one to another in the house of faith without fearing and snaring somebody else. You see, when you have a sister relationship with another sister, you you don't get in the way of the stream of God in their lives. Who am I talking to? You're not my brother if you help me remain bound. Open up in the name of Jesus every bondage buddy in your life. Brothers liberate. They're born for adversity. That's what it happens. Jesus is called, in some translations, our elder brother. So there is a brotherliness. And, and, and some of your greatest breakthroughs will come from positive, life-giving, life-flowing, peer-level relationships. If you are in isolation and alienation, I pray to God you get so uncomfortable and you can't sleep tonight. I want God to touch that pillow and drag you out of that cave. Because there's destiny out here and you in there in deception. Isolation, write it. Isolation is the precursor to deception. Everybody believes a lie when they're alone. So when you're by yourself and you're alone and you are deliberately alienated, deception is coming next. This makes sense to you. We're going to pray about the son-daughter issue. Your identity as a wife. Your identity as a mother. Your identity as a sister begins from your confidence as a daughter. I will repeat it. Your strength, the strength of your motherhood, the strength of your sisterhood, the strength of your wifeliness is your security as a daughter. Watch me. If the devil can damage you at the daughter level, there may be a consistent infracture in your ability to be everything you have the potential to be as a woman. Listen to me. Many marriages could have been preserved if right before they became somebody's fiance, they fixed their daughter self. When you marry somebody's broken daughter, what you got to do is substitute and divide your role. You got to be hubby and daddy. And not in, you know, the freaky way. <laughs> Jesus is the son of God. The same is true with men. Who, watch me, yes Lord, for performance sake. See, a man that is an orphan will be addicted to achievement. Because that achievement is, is, is the suedo form of identity. So they throw themselves in accomplishment. Who am I talking to? They throw themselves in moving out at the right time. Getting a good job. Hustling, grinding, and all of that. But the problem is, the attacks are not coming at your achievements ever. The attacks are going to always come at your identity. So watch me. So when you don't get the sun thing right, your success is seductive. The devil will use the weapon of success to strangle the sun in you. God. If you're not careful, you'll start reaching for that because what does success do? Prove. What does achievement do? Prove. What does accomplish do? accomplishment do? It makes you secure. But behind all of that, there's somebody in there that's craving for life. Is that ministering to you? you got to get that right. Now let's talk about ministry. How many of you feel called to ministry? Wave at me. Y'all like, I'm scared to say I'm called to anything right now. It's okay, y'all. We family. How many of you received a prophetic word about being called to somebody? And somebody needs what's on the inside of you. And you're going to go to the nations and change a generation. And you're going to do, do you know what all it is? Instructions for your sonship. 
You took it and created a program, wrote a book, developed a conference. You did everything but deepen your sonship before God. Those are son instructions. You are a minister to people, but you are a son to him. If you throw yourself into perfecting your service <laughs> before you heal in your sonship, then your service is not going to be as strong as it's supposed to be. Does this make sense to you? So we have a template. We have a template. And our template is this. Nobody, and, I, and if this ministers to you, feel free to worship. God's word declares that no matter who you are, what you've been through, what you've seen, he will not leave you like an orphan. He will not leave you as an orphan. It doesn't matter what your story is. He promises that he would not leave you as an orphan. Here's what we contend with. When father, hallelujah, and mother glory forsake me at that point, at that level, at that place of trauma, at that place of pain, then the Lord takes me up. He elevates those. The Bible says father of the fatherless and protector of the widow and orphan is God in his holy place. He will not leave leave you without I don't care what they do or where they go those are experiences that you will have in your life now this is a, a complicated subject matter so when we pray tonight I'm going to ask you a favor I'm going to ask you a favor don't pray with me about these things from your story that's all I'm asking because if you pray about this stuff from the place of your personal experiences, you're not going to lend strength. I'm asking you to find the faith to pray this. So put your testimony aside for a minute and become an intercessor. I'll pray by myself, y'all. Put your testimony. He did that. They did this. This church did. Put all of that over here. We're not invalidating your experience. But there's something more important and more powerful than your experience in this revelation. I'm asking you to reach for what God is saying. Reach for what God is doing. We're about to pray, but I want you to just think about this so you can get courage for it. Think about how many lives would be changed if we had good moms. Let's think about it. Think about how many ministries would flourish if we had real mothers. And I'm not talking about people in white. No shade unless necessary. I'm not talking about those that recruit. Every five, you know, year gap, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those that lay themselves aside and become a midwife for you without expectation of anything in return. Last time I checked, ain't none of my, my son, Michael Yabor, ain't never paid me to be his daddy. Selah. So if your money is what makes this relationship, why? There's a chill. Think about if real fathers were fathers, for real. Self-sacrificing, willingly walking around with pierced hands, pains in their gut, scarry knees from prayer. Think about it. I'm talking about spiritually and natural. What if we did our jobs? I'll tell you what would happen. Less people would be in cycles. Because one of the things that Father Anointing can do is break a cycle. You know when you're around a father spirit or a father anointing when you have too many firsts to count. That's a part of how you know that thing is there. Moms give the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel. Deborah said it this way, the city gates were at war. They chose new gods and chaos was everywhere. Watch me. She basically says that that mother role in Israel confronted chaos. Chaos. A part of what should be active in your life when there is a mother experience is peace unexplainable peace, just, just settlement, security. Moms don't cause chaos. <laughs> they confront it. And then she said, until I, Deborah, now she was a judge. She was a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot. She was of the tribe of Issachar. She knew what it was, to, but she identified herself mainly as a mother. I rose as a mother in Israel. America needs good mothers. I feel like I'm talking like a prophet to the nation. I know everybody's worried about who we're going to vote for, but it does not matter who is in that Oval Office. If we don't get this issue of father and mother right, the nation is going to decay anyway. We lost a generation. 
because we don't have the father-mother thing called. And I'm not saying go and slide in somebody's DM and make somebody your mom or your daddy or anything like that. I'm saying open your heart to these flows, these channels of wisdom in your life, these experiences. You don't know worship until you worship God like you're a son. My God, there's a place in God's presence where the layers of your disappointments, fears, experiences, paranoias, anxieties. I have worshipped God, Lanessa, so much so that insomnia left my life. I felt like I could sleep again. So there's a place in worship when you adjust and you become that son identity, that daughter identity, that things begin to change in your life, all right? So can we pray this? Y'all don't sound encouraged. Can we pray this? All right, get the day off of you real quick. Just do what you need to do to clear your head. Get the day off your head. Your bills, your grocery list, all of that. If you don't know how to get the day off of you, just follow my example. And then what I'm going to do is teach you how to pray in this way, all right? The easiest way to get the day off of you, just say stuff like, Lord, you are my source. My focus is on you. My concentration is on you. You are my sufficiency and you are everything that I need. You have already supplied me with that that I need concerning life and godliness, and for that I adore you. Let's, let's use this strategy, y'all. You are perfect in all of your ways. You do everything well, and you cannot make a mistake. Come on, express yourself. You have given me the gift of life. You have given me the gift of air. You have come near to me when I was in my own dung and returned like a dog to vomit. You drew me with your precious voice and you did not speak harshly to me, but you drew me by your words and your expression. You see things in me, come on, that I don't see myself. <laughs> you know my frame, my makeup, my bill. You watch my risings and you see my going down. Oh God, what have we done to deserve this kind of love? What have we done to deserve this type of attention from such a holy God? Lord, there's nothing we can do, and we confess it right now, that there is nothing we can do to earn it, nothing we can do to deserve it. We can't perform enough. We can't be good enough. We can't hit the mark enough. We can't be successful enough to deserve to be good called the sons of God. All right, y'all, I guess we're here. Let's stand up. To deserve to be called the sons of God. But you have made us sons before you. Without our permission in our mother's womb, you formed and you fashioned us. And we give you the praise. Oh, yes, you knit us in our mother's womb. You called us in vitro. You decided what season we should come to be. You decided our gender. You decided our nationality. You decided our height. You decided our, our DNA, our genetic makeup is your decision. We are more than just mere men and human beings. Oh, but we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And although the enemy had tried and decided to make us resent who we are and what we are and where we were born and how we were born and who we were born to, he made us resent our narratives. But today as a form of worship, we lift our hands and just thank you for existing stick thank you for the gift of life come on worship him right there thank you for the gift of life come on we're not praying yet we're in adoration thank you for the gift of life thank you for the gift of life my God one time in one day today alone you allowed us to breathe millions of breaths hey! today alone you allowed us to cough and sneeze you allowed the systems and the functions of our body to do that that brings it pleasure unto you and even though in times past we took it for granted on this Friday night we thank you for the activity of our limbs we thank you that the blood still runs in our veins oh yes it does we thank you for consciousness and we thank you for so 
sobriety and we thank you for psychological health glory to the son of man thank you oh god that you didn't make us after the likeness of animals and you didn't make us after the likeness of creatures you didn't make us after the likeness of the creeping beast but you made us after the likeness of the one true living god oh yes you looked in the mirror and you exhaled and here we came you looked in the mirror behind the the balconies of heaven and you glow and we came to be oh god we did not deserve that we did not deserve that iniquity should have separated us sin should have separated us rebellion should have changed our identity but oh no by the power of the blood of the lamb the unblemished lamb not only do you secure our future and not only do you secure our provision not only do you secure our existence you secured our identity and we will never not be a son of god hallelujah we will never not be a son of god hallelujah hallelujah come on let's go oh god thank you we adore you for choosing us we adore you for forming us come on we adore you thank him sometimes you just need to thank him for making you who you are come out of your frustrations and bless him for that or you crafted us you crafted us you manufactured us you dreamed us and we came to be here and we give you the glory oh god you could have got worship from rocks you could have got praise from mountains you could have caused the trees to sing but you have chosen to let the redeemed of the lord say so and now we have a song we have lyrics we have things we can say you wanted to hear it from us you could have got it from any other place but you desired it from us and we magnify you oh you're so wonderful we magnify you you're so beautiful we gaze upon you beautiful savior thank you jesus thank you jesus that now because we are your sons we can count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations hallelujah to the lamb of god thank you oh god that you don't let sons fail test you don't let sons go too far out the house you don't let sons make mistakes that alter them and mutate them and thank you that after everything we've done and after everything we've seen you have not changed your mind concerning who we are and where we're going in the glorious name of Jesus we give your name the praise my soul boasts in you heart and my flesh adore you in a dry and a weary land where there is no water you have been such a good father Abba you have not given us the spirit of fear we are no longer slaves but you've given us the spirit to be called the sons of God oh God to as many as believed on you you gave us the power you gave us the power you gave us the power to become and while we were becoming we tripped while we were becoming we slipped while we were becoming we were confused oh God but you gave us space to still become and now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we do know this that when he appears we're going to be exactly like he is because we have seen him hey we have seen him oh we have seen him oh just lift up some praise right there lift up some praise right there we're safe we're safe we're safe we're settled we're secure we have a status in the realm of the spirit we're strengthened because of what you made us to be we have no confidence in flesh but confidence in who you are Now lift your hands, let's begin to praise. Come on, keep it there. Oh yeah, I love the temperature now. Uh, uh, come on, help me. I feel like I got intercessors in the room now. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation 
and deliver us from evil oh our father our father come on talk to him our father our father our father the one who does not turn his face our father the one that does not punish us with distance hallelujah our father the one that grabs and holds us we beseech you tonight on the behalf of the place of grace lord it's been a rocky season it's been a season of uncertainty it's been a season of necessary and unnecessary warfare but you have allowed us to face things on purpose and deliberately now we come to you to settle the matter at the altar let the matter be settled at the altar oh god will you allow the father heart of god to be released in the all nations worship assembly in a way that we've never seen before give us grace to perceive you as abba in the name of the lord jesus christ there have been those that have been ejected from the house there have been those that have tried to tear the house down there have been those that have hidden in the house with secret intent but you are the father this thing began in you you are the progenitor this thing was conceived by you now let the father motive the father ministry the father lens the father voice the father value the father rod the father scepter the father heritage the father inheritance the father history be stirred in this place give us my God sonship consciousness come on pray in the name of Jesus we annul and disavow we separate ourselves from bastardized behavior both conscious and unconscious in our walking and in our talking in our dealings and in our deeds and our doings in the name of Jesus route out subconscious bastardized behavior in the name of the Lord Jesus oh for behold we are in days where men are rebelling and men are going to Stray. Men are wandering and roaming. Will you bring us into sonship submission? In the name of the Lord Jesus, help us study like sons, seek like sons, sing like sons, write like sons, love like sons, obey like sons, listen like sons, hear like sons, adhere like sons, react like sons, respond like sons, reach like sons. My God, help us to become like Jesus who knew no sin but was yielded in his total self to you he presented oh God his humanity before you and you led him like a son my God thank you for grabbing our hand you called Israel your son and they rebelled oh God will you pour out now a brand new spirit a brand new endowment a brand new consciousness for us to be deepened in the identity even of the son of God oh yes your word declares in Genesis 3 that it would be the seed of the one that would bruise the head of the serpent and when you want to get the job done you always send the son let that be a new sending let that be a, oh, 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 oh. let that be a new sending hey, let that be a new sending because your sons are in position in the name of Jesus we come against offense because sons can't be offended we come against fear sons can't live in terror we disavow ourselves from resentment division strife schism and we posture ourselves now as sons of God come on pray that for a while pray that for a while I feel the water level coming up tsunami in this place spirit of God waves upon waves of revelation and wisdom as we reach and seek for you we're crying out Abba we're crying out Abba we're crying out Abba we're crying out Abba Chicago needs sonship South Shore needs sonship America needs sonship Pour it out in the name of Jesus. Abba! Abba! Hey, hey! Abba! 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 Let us let me get the yes. Hallelujah! You are our Father. You are our Father and you will not forsake us. You are our Father and you will not fail us. You are our Father and you will not lead us astray. You are our Father and you will not lead us without a comforter. Without a comforter. You are our stronghold. You are our shelter. Oh yes, my God, our tabernacle, our safe place. We hide in you. We hide in you. Come on, press into that. Oh, 
pray in the Holy Ghost now in the name of the Lord Jesus we present all nations worship assembly before you and we curse by the Spirit of God every alternate identity every false identity every declaration that would try to shape shift her to be something she is not you have molded and you have fashioned this place with your divine intent your heart and your mind I'm asking in the name of Jesus that in the same way the dove descended upon the shoulder of the lamb and you made pronouncement over Jesus that he was your son and that you were well pleased cause there be a brand new security a brand new settlement in this place that the future is in your head my God even though you led us through a wilderness you brought us through great testings and even to be confronted with wild beasts things that were not human in nature attacks and assignments that were sent to destroy and distract you brought us to this place now now we declare on the other side of this wilderness in the same way you did with Jesus because he was your son you sent ministering angels and we declare over all nations Chicago that the angels of the Lord be encamped in this place ministering spirits to heal from battle fatigue heal from worry heal from anxiety heal from strain heal from discord send the angels of the Lord oh God and trouble the waters let there be divine restoration of bodies of minds of hearts of souls of spirits of relationships renew and revive renew and revive renew and revive renew and revive Will you revive your people huh, that their hearts would trust in you? Hey, will you revive your people huh, that they would pursue you with great passion? Huh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, huh, we declare zeal, huh, the zeal of the Lord huh, in 7359. Huh, zeal, huh, in the name of Jesus, he'll be pushed. Huh, zeal, belly work, y'all. Huh, zeal, huh, zeal, huh, turn the table, huh, flip the table. Zeal, huh, zeal, huh, zeal, hey, hey, zeal, hey, 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 zeal, oh, zeal. Father, we pray for every wounded woman in the All Nations Worship Assembly those that have grown weary and tired from pressing alone in life struggling to survive and succeed trying to see their way navigating through the lanes of life and for many it has felt like a jungle and they've not felt covered and or protected we lift them to you begin to give them sonship consciousness make them like Esther uh, who was given up to a system that was meant to strangle her and yet you endued her with great power and gave her audience before kings we declare that the Esthers are being raised in all nations Chicago those that may have felt like they were adopted and orphans uh, and now by your hand hey by your hand hey by your hand uh, by your providence uh, you change their audiences now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, we say that the women of this place uh, will not be given over to deceptive agendas uh, they will not be given over to seduction from strange men uh, bizarre things to rape and rule and wreck their destinies uh, in the name of Jesus uh, monsters on assignment uh, to their ministries and their calling and their purpose uh, will you raise within them a sonship consciousness help me pray we lift up the mother anointing oh oh here it comes it's coming from another place oh a mothering heart a mothering spirit that, that that's not afraid to plow in the field gather we need naomi and ruth my god will you make those relationships and cause those conversations and arrangements but pour it out like an oil upon this very place in the name of jesus that we would know the el shadi the all breast one uh, the one who nurtures uh, let it be so in this place manifest uh, your mothering heart uh, the mother spirit in this place uh, concerning the church which is your bride uh, Lord will you do it by your spirit uh, reveal unto us uh, the necessary fellowship uh, between male and female oh God uh, break the strife uh, between the genders uh, we come against and bind uh, all gender competition uh, and battles of sexes uh, and we release right now uh, a strong unity a strong binding a strong partnership your sons and daughters your sons and daughters shall prophesy let there be a brand new prophetic spirit yeah, that moves in this place because of tandem partnership between men and women yes God you can do it we believe you for it we believe you for it now now pray in the Holy Ghost let's cultivate this river now cultivate it there you go church cultivate it we stand in the midst of the wisdom of God cultivate it now there it goes Whew. 
Let an earmark of this nation, this great people, be that they are joined as sons and daughters, settled and secure in their identity, not competing with an alternate or another, not feeling inferior or incompetent against another, but settled and satisfied in their place and in their unique identity. In the name of Jesus, multiply that sonship anointing. Your word declares that your sons come from afar, your daughters come nursing at the hip because they're drawn to the glory of the Lord. Let this place be filled with that degree of submission, that degree of obedience to your purposes and your plans. Oh God, fix our eyes not upon mere men, but fix our eyes upon the mandate in the name of the Lord Jesus we honor you by positioning ourselves before you what you called us to do and what you called us to be yes God in Jesus name let that family consciousness be born afresh in this church let that family consciousness be born afresh in that movement in the name of Jesus we expose and we confront any attempts for control manipulation witchcraft seduction allurement enchantment in the name of the Lord Jesus no spell binding relationships but that that leads us to wisdom oh God you've given us the gift of mothers and fathers to be wisdom ministries in our lives let there be a brand new degree of wisdom that rests and manifests on this movement in the strong name of Jesus we need wisdom help me pray we need wisdom 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 except the Lord build the house the those that labor, labor in vain. And except the Lord God, the city. Those that watch, watch in vain. Oh God, this is your house. This be your people. This be your family. Let there be a strengthening of the DNA. Oh, a strengthening of the DNA. A strengthening of the ability to multiply. For the enemy had thought that he would make eunuchs out of this place. That he would sever our ability to lose seed in the earth. But devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. We find you. Your agenda. Uh, your enchantments, uh, your incantations, uh, your hypnotizing. Uh, sons are coming to the house. Uh, let it be so to the nations. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, forgive us for being numb. Uh, for being numb. Uh, forgive us for turning off our affections. Uh, forgive us for turning off our expectations. Uh, for turning off our faith. Uh, forgive us for being numb. Uh, and raise brand new faith in us. Uh, brand new confidence in us. Uh, that you will supply. Uh, and you will connect. Uh, and you will lead. Uh, and you will guide. Uh, and you will lift. Uh, and you will heal and you will deliver and you will deliver hey, you will deliver surely you will deliver you are our delivery God and we trust in you now we believe in you now for your deliverance oh let it be in the walls let it be in the walls give us a matured vision for what this place is to be give us a refined perspective of what this place is to be we no longer mourn over Saul for that era and that regime but we look toward the fresh pouring of oil we look toward the Davidic period we look toward the period of war and worship wisdom and warfare wealth ha, ha, from diverse places now father pull men out of the caves by your loving voice your word says with loving kindness you draw men and begin to whisper for some and begin to talk strongly to others and bring them out of their caves into their assignments in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let the assignments be agitating let the assignments be annoying cause the assignments to cause restlessness grab a hold of the hearts of men those that are ignoring you those that are trying to turn your voice down grab their ears my God grab their careers grab their relationships grab their romantic life grab their distractions by your strong hand and pull them in until they're crucified Pull them in until they're nailed. Pull them in until they bear their cross. Let it be in this day that even as the Son of Man bore his cross, cause all nations worship assembly once again to take up their cross, take up their cross and follow you. We need discipleship in this place. Let there be a strong discipleship vision, a strong discipleship passion, a strong discipleship fervor to multiply, to multiply in the household of faith. And you have promised that you would add to the church table such as should be said let it be so that the book of Acts the phenomena that belongeth unto the New Testament is moving aggressively in this place we labor for it now let it be so that that is our culture crown us crown us crown us let there be a brand new crowning and we'll labor and cultivate it now in the name of Yeshua we believe you now we believe you now we believe you
in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Confront the powers of rejection. The powers of the orphan spirit. Heal us. Heal the leaders from abandonment. Heal the vision from abandonment. Touch this place now and strip abandoned behavior, abandoned positioning, abandoned thinking in the name of Jesus and decorate and store and staff and stop every pillar and every post left unmanned in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what belongs where in your house and we are living stones in your hand. Position us now in the name of Jesus and right now we declare in agreement that everyone will find their place, that there will be no out of placement or displacement or misplacement, but you're going to position us come on help me you're gonna position them strategically you're gonna position them for the season you're gonna position them for the reason you're gonna help them to position and prosper in the name of Jesus and every devil trying to pull people out of their position exposed by light let it be illumined and confronted for what they are in the name of Jesus of Nazareth heritage belongs to the servant heritage belongs to the servant provision belongs to the servant pour out a servanthood spirit a servanthood mentality a servant who consciousness uh, until this assignment uh, comes to pass uh, we will not uh, take our breath uh, before we have seen uh, the hand of God uh, the movement of God uh, the judgment of God in the earth call all nations uh, worship assembly bless her crown her strengthen her extend her advance her prosper her build her grow her teach her instruct her lead her heal her deliver her develop her multiply her multiply Multiply her, multiply her. Pray in the spirit for a while. Fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters, sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, fathers and mothers. God help us to have the fear of the Lord. reverence let it be returned in this place reverence come on help me reverence in this place oh pull out of the very chest cavity of this place the orphan spirit and the orphan heart reach in come on help me don't get weary and pull it out now help us to position much differently than we have in times past to respond much differently than times past help us to be delivered from performance anxiety performance pressure help us to be delivered from it in the name of Jesus perfectionism that's keeping us out of our purpose and out of our position before you even concerning this New Testament work and cause help us oh God to be delivered from fear of mistake making hope oh, fear from trial and error and help us to know that you empower us even when we get it wrong you strengthen us even when we misstep you're ordering the steps of this people and in this place and in the name of Jesus build your army build your army in this place in the name of Jesus of Nazareth and may she wax stronger in the name of the Lord and cause us to have instructions and insight concerning what territory what land what space what possibility what area what concept what scheme what construct that you would like us to take dominion over for we declare now by the power of the Holy Ghost that these are dominion days we're not asking anymore we're not begging anymore we're not pleading anymore but the kingdom separate violence and the violence taken by force days of dominion decades of dominion because of how we cried and how we labored and how we consecrated let dominion a dominion mandate a dominion vision a dominion power let there be brand new authority according to the word of god brand new authority keys 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 let there be released in this place a dominion spirit dominion talking dominion decrees dominion decrees let it be so in Jesus name two by two wow heal the relationship between Peter and Paul heal the communication between Paul and Silas let Timothy yield to Paul 
calls Paul to follow the direction of the prophets. Let there be New Testament functionality and dynamics in this place that worketh unto wisdom for the sake of the harvest. We declare that no gift comes short or lacking in this place. That this place is filled with the apostolic spirit. We give you the praise. The prophetic spirit runs powerfully through this place as our heritage. Your name is wonderful. The pastoral anointing is not lacking for new shepherds with pure hearts are being positioned and groomed even now as we speak. Pastors and teachers, have, my God, they instruct and confront in the name of the Lord Jesus, building foundation and establishing men in their hearts. Thank you for evangelists now. Fire brands in the name of the Lord Jesus. Those that know the power and the work and the way of the gospel, let it be so that we are not lacking and we don't have a deformed body or a deformed hand or a handicapped household. Strength in this place and confidence and encourage that we are following you in the name of Jesus. Crossing over now into unprecedented days. Days that we've never seen before and we do not fear and we do not fret but we tune our ears now to hear your next instructions. Yeah to hear our next instructions speak spirit of God come on throw your faith there talk to us talk to us open your mouth wide hey, in our direction give us instruction and confirmation and direction concerning how we are to place our footing in this place come on lift your voice and begin to roar in the Holy Ghost roar in the Holy Ghost take on brand new yokes but these are not yokes of bondage and yokes of slavery but these are yokes of service come on lift your hands to the Lord yokes of service we consecrate ourselves before you afresh and anew presenting ourselves unto the priestly way and the Levitical rite giving ourselves over to the ministry of Aaron help us oh God to be postured in holiness before you Jesus, you're worthy of it. You're worthy of it. Cause this place, as we cross over into this next year, to wax bold, brave, and courageous. In Jesus' name. All right, find you a prayer partner. Let's do this. Hurry up. Preferably somebody you don't normally pray for. Find your prayer partner. Prophet Stephanie, meet Prophet Ruth. <laughs> now, what we're praying is in the same vein of what we did in a corporate prayer strength. We still have a vein open. We want to go into the pressure and the volume of that vein. Say yes. What we want to speak into is the sonship consciousness in the hand of the person we hold. Listen to me specifically. We want to make sure that we use our faith to uproot and rout out any orphan-like behavior or symptoms in their lives. So we want our, 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 the brother and the sister whose hand we hold to find their acceptance, their placement, their security, their focus, their study, their meditation. You can begin to pray things about their destiny, their assignment, their purpose, and their courage. You need to deal with fears and temperaments that are not responsive to directions from God. And then as you conclude your prayer, pray and contend for your neighbor for their next set of instructions. You want to be careful that you discern deception. There are moments of transition where the enemy will try to use discouragement to deceive. We want these instructions to be real and right, okay? Now, it's always good if you need a place to start, begin with the spirit of wisdom. Because wisdom is the principal thing. And then the spirit of prayer will allow you to detect things that you can confront in that person. I will allow whoever wants to pray to begin first. Just don't do it at the same time so that you know how to receive. 
Now, I feel led to give you this instruction. One of the things that adjust in your life as you start working on your sonship self is how you receive. You have to learn to receive. You have to learn to receive. Jesus said, ye have not because ye ask not. And fear of receiving is in a lot of people. We want to believe God to deepen that in us, okay? All right, you can begin to pray now. Go ahead. Whoever wants to start, go. Pray. And, and I mean pray like your life depended on it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the purpose of the hand I hold. Thank you for the test of the persons whose hand I hold. We bless you and we believe you for the identity, the steps of the person's hand I hold. Thank you that you foreplanned them, you foreordained them, and you crafted them. For they are your idea in the earth even now. They exist to bring, bring pleasure to you. They exist to glorify you. Thank you for their role in this season, their ministry, their purpose, their point. Thank you for your provision in their lives. Hallelujah. Thank you for their wellness, their well-being, their stature, how you've made and fashioned them. Oh God, we honor you even in this very moment for investing in eternity into their hearts. That they've not wasted time in their lives. But they've come to a peak and a ripening and a fermenting of that that you planned for them. We give your name the praise. Thank you for connecting them, positioning them, giving them the strength to pivot and turn, to make good and conscious decisions by the power of wisdom. I bless you for their belly, for appetites that glorify you, for desires that are driven by you. We acknowledge and pray for your purposes in them, in Jesus' name. Thank you for their ability to hear you, to perceive wisdom. And they hear in this season, not as an orphan, but as a daughter, as a son before you. In the name of Jesus, begin to disciple their tongue and their language. Give them vocabulary and speech and words and phrases. In the name of Jesus, we declare over the person's hand that I hold that they will bear fruit in this season and much fruit. That they've endured the scalpel and they've endured the circumcision and now you bring them upon a mount to be named. And as you bring them upon the mount of God to be named, that they have courage and confidence to obey you every step of the way and at all costs. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for their prayer lives now. That as they seek you, they don't strain or they don't stress and they don't strive. But there is a brand new sensitivity because of their sonship status. In the name of Jesus now, a confidence that can only become from their placement in the household of faith. And in their placement before you, in the glorious name of Jesus. Help them, oh God, to fight the temptation to rebel and react in the flesh and not to the nature of carnality but help them to respond and to hear and to heed in the strong name of Jesus let there be a spirit of servitude and servanthood a spirit of obedience and worship and reverence that's poured upon their shoulders in Jesus name father you've gone before them and you've seen every trap you've seen every pothole every plan every scheme of the devil you've seen every attack you've seen every monster you've seen everything seeking to devour them now Lord will you give them grace to avoid and walk around the scheme avoid the snare that that is in the air and that that is upon the earth that has decided to kill and destroy them that has decided to kill them and avert them from their destiny pour out your wisdom like a shield in the name of Jesus cover them by fire in the name of the Lord Jesus help them oh God not to study and not to seek and not to be distracted by their adversaries but help them to know that their enemies scatter before them with every step of obedience you send their enemies in divers ways in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth as I hold the hand of my brother let there be a corporate anointing that flows from heart to heart and breast to breast. Even in this place Quanonia among a tabernacle be Emmanuel in the midst of your people in the name of Jesus sanctuary in this place let it be undeniable that God the God of gods is here give this the grace to be the congregation of the mighty where you dwell and you judge even among the rulers of the earth we give your name the glory. Let it be so that as we position ourselves as the household of faith that my hand the hand that I hold has strong doctrine strong foundation strong meditation the scriptures regulate their doing and their deeds their walk their career their life their choices their passion their appetite in the name of Jesus their meditation is being ministered to by the power of the Word of God let it be so in this place the household of faith let it be so that we have men and women elders and teachers those that can help us line upon line precept upon precept even so it is our New Testament heritage it is our New Testament inheritance that we be rooted oh! 
Oh, that we be rooted up, that we be rooted up, that we be rooted up. Your word declares that those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Let there be a brand new rooting. Your word promised that we would be like a tree planted, like a tree planted by rivers. Establish our roots. Ow! Establish our roots. Establish our roots. Break up hollow ground in the name of Jesus of Nazareth and let roots go deep and fruit be born to the nations come on pray Nobody like you, Lord. It's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh Lord. It's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. And we're crying, oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Put your hands and say, oh, 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 oh. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like
trusting that everything that we've expressed and articulated by your power and by your spirit has been accomplished and fulfilled we're trusting you by faith that not one word has gone to the ground and that there has been courage that has waxed strong in the hearts of those that were discouraged instruction in the eyes and the ears of those that are seeking to know what to do thank you for establishing us now that that you do and that that you see and that that you say concerning us 
Thank you that these are prophesied days, but that greater days are before us, moving swiftly and quickly. Uh, Justin and Ashley, come here. Prophet Ruth, Prophet Stephanie, y'all get in the front real quick. Uh. Mm. All they see is you. Yeah, man. If you grew up in a foster care system or without knowing your mother or your father, or if you are an adopted child, wave at me if that is your story. Wave at me if that is your story. Each of you come up. I'm believing, God, that there's a prophetic word. This is symbolic, but there is something God wants to say for the season that's moving. Pastor Jamal, will you come? Trey, will you come? I just believe we're supposed to say some 2023 things to those who feel like their future has been disturbed and unsettled. I'm going to let these prophetic people minister to you. trying to gather the sound I hear in my ear. These are loud tears, like orphan tears. How many of you, if you're in the room, if you've lost a parent this year, wave at me. You come. Come. Let's just lift our hands and worship. I won't hold you very long. We're done, I promise. But I want the word of the Lord to flow in this direction concerning these people. It's been a while since you've had a word to contend with. Yeah. I want to put something in your hands for 2023, something to believe God for, something to push you into belief with God. Father, I'm asking for your voice to be amplified in this place. All nations, you are past due for like three or four days of consistent prophetic presbytery. I believe at the top of the year, I'm going to schedule something where we can deliver the word of the Lord to individuals. How many of you bear witness with that? Even if you don't, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so we're going to speak the word of the Lord and minister prophetically to you right now. God, talk to us now about this year, about what you want to do in these lives, in the name of Jesus, real quick. Give me a minute. Woman of God, come here, baby. Vanessa. Come here, Mohi. Mohi, come here. Sugar, come up the stairs. Vanessa, come up the stairs. <laughs> Give me a minute. Don't rush me. Vanessa, stand in front of her. Mohi, just receive. Lift your hands real quick. Vanessa, start to dance. Until the day of your mourning comes to an end. Until the day of your loss comes to an end. The spirit of laughter and joy and celebration 
will come in the place of the theft and the robbery. And that that has been slapped out of your hands and the heart that has been shattered this year will be mended and will be healed as you set yourself aside. No plan lost, no money wasted, but invested in the direction of your next move and decision. Father, she is not an abandoned one. I curse abandonment in the name of Jesus. And I curse every assignment of every wolf pulling her out of her destiny in deliverance in Jesus name. Let it be that she is strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And let it be that she waxes with great strength such as she's never seen before. I loose this now to her. Now this abusive thing. Lift your hands now. The power of the Lord is here. I said the power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Come on, do it now. Y'all begin to prophesy. Go ahead. Come on. Yeah. I said the power of the Lord is here. Come on. If you're in here, you want an impartation for your prayer life. Run to this hour right now and do it quickly. Come on. Do it fast. Robbie, push me while the anointing is here. I'm going to need some help. Because I'm going to get wild in a minute. In the name of Jesus, I release the strength, the power of intercession and fervent prayer. Take it and drink it because it's yours. Come on. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I lose the spirit of prayer to you now. In Jesus' name, fire. Let it happen now. Come on. Let's do it. It's just flowing from my life to yours. Come on. In Jesus' name, out of your belly. Flow the rivers, rivers of prayer, articulation, and spread to this utterance in Jesus' name.
with the sons of God, no longer orphans, but now are we the sons of
second week in the month of May that altered your life and scarred you emotionally forever. God's given you a retroactive restoration from the worst call of your life. Your phone rang and it ruined your day and it's not stopped bothering you and now that grief is on you strong. It started to impact you physically, even with cysts. God's healing you today in your mind, in your body, and in your emotions. And the nightmare you left at home there's a nightmare. I see a nightmare at home. There's a nightmare at... I'm walking past the second room to the left. The second room to the left. You, le you left the sheet open, but there's something there that reminds you of, 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 of a painful event and hardship that's terrorizing you with the memories and the imprints in your mind. Oh, ho. Oh. God is even regulating your blood flow. 
The enemy's been trying to hit you with irregular bleeding. And I command that thing to dry up now in the name of Jesus. A lady, you're crossing over into your most blessed years. I come against the agenda of abuse, of control, of witchcraft, of manipulation. And I command your resources to be loosed now in Jesus' name. You need a bill paid by the 15th. God said he's going to do that for you. 48 hours, you'll have the answer. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Oh, come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Glory to God. Ho, ho, I feel victory shout. Come on. Hallelujah. The Lord God reigneth among the heathen. The Lord God reigneth in the heavens. The Lord God reigneth among the earth. The nations declare that Jehovah is God. He rules. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord with exceeding great joy. To him be all blessings and honor dominion and power both now and forever everybody screams so be it god bless you Man, man, that's good, man. No problem.